A big hello to you. Welcome back to the channel. You might notice we're not in the loft with Weir Yard. Today we've come downstairs because we needed to find a table. And the reason for this is that Hornby have very kindly sent over their all new TT120 set, the Easterner. And you can see that here in front of me. And I'm going to put this through its paces. It's an interesting new system that Hornby have introduced from scratch. And if you're thinking TT, I remember that from the days of trying. This is completely different. This is actually completely to scale. So TT on the continent, quite popular scale. This is perfectly in scale with that. So if you already model continental TT, then the Hornby TT120 items are a perfect match with them. But in these days of houses getting ever smaller, it's always the case that space is very much at a premium. And as you've probably seen with Weir Yard, you do need quite a bit of space for a double O gauge layout. But N gauge, whilst it is out there very, very popular, is a little bit on the small side. And if, like me, your eyesight's not as great as it could be, there needs to be a little bit of a happy compromise. And that's where Hornby have brought out the TT120 range to keep some of the advantages of double O without getting some of the disadvantages of N gauge. So I'm really excited to take a look at this. And we've got the full set here in the box. Now they've already brought out a Flying Scotsman set and there's a number of other items which are due for release over the coming months, including class 08 diesel shunters and uh, even some more modern image stuff like class 66s as well. So it promises to be quite a comprehensive system. But we're going to use this as intended from scratch, make our own little model railway, get it running here on the table and just see how well it goes together and um, just how well it fits on the table. Now, for avoidance of doubt, this table is actually slightly too small to put a double O gauge layout on. It's um, just slightly underneath what radius one in double O gauge would be. So you wouldn't be able to run a uh, larger tender locomotive such as this. But let's see what we've got in the box. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rocar Prototype Models, where detail, accuracy and value for money go hand in hand. With their debut model of Safepack Auto Racks wowing model railroaders alike, now is your chance to order these in road names and configurations to accurately reproduce auto rack workings from 1974 to the present day on your model railroad. Order today from rocarmodels.com and see the full range for yourself. <laughs> So we've got the box here and one of the things I do want to try and show you is on the back, it's interesting, the picture of the contents showing the locomotive and the three coaches are actual size. So if you're a stunt for wondering just how big they are, we've got a handy little reference there. We've also got a breakdown of the rest of the contents and you do actually get quite a bit in the box. Um, we've got the full ring of track, it's actually an oval not a circle. We get a point, we get enough for a siding with a buffer stop, a re-railer, controller. But the fact that you get three coaches rather than perhaps the more usual two and the A4 locomotive, that's quite a lot to get you started in your set. The outer box is pretty tough and resilient and the inside actually um, there's no polystyrene I'm really quite keen on, on no polystyrene and also bare minimum of plastic packaging that's really great to see if you're concerned about the environment this is all easy to recycle anywhere it's just a cardboard in the set you do actually get a huge amount of stuff and uh, it's just a little bit difficult to uh, show you all in one go but you can see it's plenty of track and one thing I think there has been a little bit of confusion online is you've got a load of curves to make the actual oval but don't get them mixed up with this extra curve 
which is actually for the siding. And if you get this mixed up, your geometry won't work. And they are clearly marked on the back. Uh, but you can see there that the uh, radius of the curve is different. Uh, but don't, don't find yourself falling into that little snag. And we also get a point plus a um, decent amount of straight track. That's the uh, power rail as well. We've got a really easy method there of plugging and unplugging the uh, controller in. We've got the re-railer. It's a buffer stop, which appears to be a slightly smaller patterned version, obviously to uh, suit the TT, of the double O gauge buffer that Hornby do. We've got the detail parts there for the locomotive. Controller is over here at this end. And then I'm going to get out the locomotive and the three coaches. And let's take a good close look at these. The loco comes in a protective plastic clamshell. And immediately, actually, this has got a lot of detail on it. Uh, we get number 6004, William Whitelaw, and uh, full blackened motion. That motion actually does look pretty fine on there. The wheels, too, look good. And we've got a center sprung front bogey, which uh, does look to be pretty substantial casting in there. Front face of the locomotive captured really, really well. And not sprung buffers, but to be honest, doesn't really need them. Looking into the cab, there's a lot of detail. You can see the bucket seats and all of that back head detail is correctly in place in that cab. We've got uh, glazing and the tender is semi-permanently connected. You can see there's a screw at both ends to protect the power cable that goes through to the tender and it does look like we've got pickups on the tender wheels as well and uh, we've got a self-centering mechanism for this coupling again not sprung buffers on the back but doesn't really need it the back of the tender that looks um, looks quite nice so the, the door looks slightly offset in there be interesting just to compare with the double O version, whether that also is the case with them. And the printing is really nice and sharp. The British Railways logo, the lining, the numbering, we've even got the works plate on there. And there's a good deal of weight to this as well. We've got all of the roof fence uh, correctly modeled. Uh, safety valves on there, pretty good. The whistle at the front is a turned metal piece and quite robust, the double chimney. And uh, just going to move these coaches to one side, uh, just to give you an idea on sizes. This is a 00 A4. So I've got Merlin here, which again, Hornby A4. And this has got the corridor tender. So actually, yeah, looking at the back, we have also got the door slightly offset. So that is correct. And you can see that TT does offer a huge space advantage over double O. And I hadn't quite realized how much smaller the TT120 items are. And I'm gonna compare that. I don't have an A4 in N gauge, but this is an N gauge class 28. And you can see that this is a great deal smaller. So it's N gauge, TT120, and then double O. And the end gauge is quite small. And just to give you an idea of the relative sizes, because I don't have a TT uh, class 28, but that's what the double O version looks like. Uh, end gauge, double O, TT 120, double O. So um, it's quite an interesting size comparison. It's big enough over the end gauge that we do actually have um, a reasonable amount more space in there, which is important on a number of different levels for space, for decoders, speaker setups. That makes it a lot easier on that front, especially when we get down to the smaller locomotives like the class 08 Shunter. And also if Hornby bring out things like a TT120 version of their J50 as well, that will bode well for being able to get the full sound setup in them. These also feel a lot easier to deal with than N-Gage when it comes to putting these on the track. 
So getting the piece of track, you can see that the actual envelope there of N gauge to TT, quite a, a little bit smaller. And then there's a real presence to the TT, which is less so in N gauge, and it makes the double O seem positively huge. When it comes to the coaches, you get three in the set, which is a reasonable number for a train with a locomotive plus three coaches. The detail on these is pretty good, flush glazing, and I really do like the printing on the windows. We get all of the fine detail that you used to in double O. Uh, not sprung buffers, but you wouldn't expect that. These couplings, again, they are actually in a kind of NEM pocket, which is... Uh, it's really good because it does mean that if you want to replace them, I guess that is pretty uh, easy to do. We've got the um, cam close coupling mechanism. We're used to that in 00. We get that too in TT120. All of the coach underframe details there are um, pretty good, reasonably sharp. And again, we've got all of that interior in the coach as well. Uh, end detail, steps and uh, handrails there. They're all um, part of the same moulding, but it does look pretty reasonable. We've got these metal wheels. The flanges too look pretty reasonable. Uh, we don't have uh, any oversize uh, pizza cutter style flanges. And the bogies on there too. There's a lot of detail going on. These are not coarse items at all. They're clip fit it would seem into the uh, chassis molding and uh, everything else about this coach the roofs too and the actual ribs here on the roof as well there's just enough uh, raised detail to make them stand out so that they look right with all these ventilators too in place so this is the uh, composite corridor so we've got the standard class at one end and first class at the other running number e15488 the next coach in the set, we've got the uh, brake second corridor, the BSK, and this is running number E34731. Again, printing and decoration is pretty good, flush glazing. I do like that interior. You're getting a lot of detail able to be present on this TT120. It does seem to be a compromise space wise between what you can fit in double O and the detail you can get in N gauge and it seems to take the best of both. Again we've got that quality roof detail and a uh, final coach in this set we've got another composite corridor 15480 so that is a different running number to the other one which is good we've not just got a duplicate and uh, again, it is a really quite nice offering. And I must admit, there's a, a pleasing feel to the TT120. And for those wondering, the comparison in size between TT120 and 00, you can see that you're actually going to get a lot more in a given space for TT120. And at the same time, not quite getting so small as to be difficult to handle, difficult to see the detail, difficult to get extra detail in such as uh, the sound fitting. And in that respect, the TT120 does seem to very much lend itself to those people who maybe don't already have a layout. Maybe space is a huge consideration. Maybe you put off N-Gage because it's just a little bit too small. And I know certainly people like me whose eyesight is not as good as perhaps it could be. You can't see the details so well. You can't easily get the uh, N-Gage stuff on the track. Uh, the TT does seem to give you a, a deal of compromise on that. So there we have it. Those are the items that come in this set. One thing I will say about the controller is this does look to be one that you can use on other scales as well, if needs be. It's a standard 12 volt DC controller, but we're just going to put that to one side. And let's get the track out and have a look at making up our layout here on the table. Literally, TT stands for tabletop, and that is exactly what we are going to be using here 
just like anybody's house might have. I'm going to keep that piece of track to one side. That's to go with the point, and we don't want to get that mixed up and make the geometry not work. The track itself actually has pretty much the same sort of fish plates that you used to if you've been using other scales and gauges as well. And these are just a standard set track. So let's line them up, push them together and start making up our oval. And these go together pretty easily. I'm just looking there, this, that seems all right. I'm just making sure that all is well. And you can see actually that this is fitting in the space we've got available quite well. We're not running any risk of getting close to the edges. So this can be set up and run without any worry of things getting knocked off. So there's our full curve for one end. And I'm going to put the power rail here. And every time you put a straight on one side, make sure you balance it with a straight on the other. And if you're wondering why I'm just throwing a rail over there every time I put one in over here, it's just to make sure that we've got a balanced oval, that we don't get carried away and end up using all the straights down one side and then find that actually we uh, have uh, not left us enough for the other. Once you get into the swing of doing this, this is quite easy. And you can see very, very quickly we've got this set out. So if you're a parent and you're putting this together for a child, then you can get up and running really, really quickly, which is quite important. There we have it. We've got our full oval set up. So I'm going to plug you in but not turn on just yet. Plug this in. And this is quite a nice innovative feature. We've got a button on the top, press that down, and these prongs just slide in place. Turn our power on and just check. We've got a light coming on. That's perfect. And I am gonna use this uh, railer, because this, I think, is a great idea. That just clips onto the track, and then it's simply a case of running the locomotive and the rolling stock down the ramp. And then for coupling together, just very easily, no pressure really needed, just push them together and they, they actually just clip together. So there, and that's quite a nice positive hold that they've got. The coupling itself, it's reminiscent of the close couplings that Hornby um, do in Double O with uh, a number of different items of rolling stock. Certainly the Grosley Teak coaches come with what looks to be a little bit of a similar arrangement. So let's see now. And there we are, we're up and running. That's reasonably smooth as well. Let me get my glasses back so I can see. There's a little bit of a lean on the corners. But there we go. And the train is running quite smoothly actually. It's quite a sweet mechanism on the locomotive. There is a little bit of a lean just on this curve. This curve seems all right, and I don't know whether it's because we've got this laid onto a cloth just to protect the surface of the table. And there we have it. There's no stuttering over any of the joints, and that's on 50% power that we've got there. So the mechanism on this A4 does seem to be pretty smooth. I can get it running down to quite a slow speed or I can get it up to quite a fast speed and it holds the track quite well. There's a little bit of a lean on the corners 
and I'm not entirely sure whether that's the curves or the cloth that we're laid on but it doesn't seem to really affect the uh, locomotive and this is the perfect startup for a uh, a small family, maybe not a lot of space, this will run perfectly well on the table and then can be packed away afterwards. And you can run decent length trains, decent length locomotives, all within the space of a table. And it's quite easy to make up a small baseboard if you want to secure the track down and get to work with the track map that is available to form the basis for what is actually quite a convenient small model layout. And there's a whole range of buildings, both forthcoming from Hornby, but also there's a lot of support from the likes of Pico as well. And uh, we've on this channel done a little bit of work putting together the laser cut wood kits of signal boxes, station buildings, and these are really nice kits that provide a little bit of something extra, perhaps a modeling project for uh, the young modeler to undertake, which can be added quickly and easily to a model railway of this scale. And Pico also do a full range of track if you want to get a little bit more ambitious, maybe beyond the confines of the track system that Hornby provide. So I'm going to put a station over here. We haven't got the platform yet, but uh, it's all good stuff. And a signal box. Again, these are from the Pico kits. I'm going to put that near the point. And normally you'd put the good shed on the siding, but actually I think it's always fun to uh, have the train passing through. So let's just see if we can put these together and just make sure that uh, the train can get through them. One thing I would say is when you're just placing it onto a cloth like this then you have to be very exact with your placing of some of these buildings if you want the train to run through but there we go. And it's also the case that maybe too if you're say going on holiday and you want to keep up with your uh, daily dose of vitamin train, then this is a great set that you can pack and take on holiday. All you need is that one plug socket and what is actually quite a, uh, a small uh, amount of space. And you could imagine setting this up and using it perhaps on a rainy day on the table in the caravan at the caravan park, or maybe at a, a holiday chateau somewhere. And definitely there is a lot of scope with this system. I have to say, I'm having a lot of fun here. We very, very quickly put together a nice little model railway. The TT120 is the perfect scale for running on a tabletop like this, for space-starved uh, situations, and also for maybe for travel situations too. So I've had a lot of fun, and certainly I'd like to thank Hornby for sending over the TT120 Easterner set to give us a chance to have a good close look at it. And overall, this does get the thumbs up from me. And I'm really excited to see how the TT system develops as Hornby bring through more models to the market. One of the other things that Hornby have done with TT120 is it's to scale. And this is something that's plagued N-Gage, 00, throughout the ages, where there's been so much fudging and compromise. TT120 is a bold move to move away from that and once and for all establish a scale and gauge that is totally to scale without any of the compromises that have dogged everything else. And it's also the case that that is exactly the same scale that's being used across Europe for TT120. And that means that for the first time ever, you can mix and match UK rolling stock and locomotives with European rolling stock and locomotives and have them all to exactly the same scale.
Well, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative. Don't forget to tickle that like button and share this video too. And we've got a link down below that takes you to the Hornby website where you can pick up this set and all of the other items in the Hornby TT120 range. But I'd love to hear from you. What do you think about this system? Uh, do leave a comment in the comment section down below, and it'd be really interesting to hear, is this something maybe that you've bought a set? What have been your experiences with it? Or is this perhaps something that uh, sparked the modeling interest and is maybe on your radar? Or maybe this is something that you see as a great way to get a younger member of your family interested in the hobby. Do leave a comment, it's always great to hear from you. But until next time, please like, share and subscribe. And also you can check us out over on Patreon and we've got multiple tiers to uh, help you to support the channel to keep making the videos that you want to see. Also, do check out our full merch store in the description box down below. And until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying happy modelling, take care, bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rocar Prototype Models, where detail, accuracy, and value for money go hand in hand. With their debut model of Safe Pack Auto Racks wowing model railroaders alike, now is your chance to order these in road names and configurations to accurately reproduce auto rack workings from 1974 to the present day on your model railroad. Order today from rocarmodels.com and see the full range for yourself. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Popper, Karen Nicol, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, Trains with Nick, and Simon Snow. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.